Hi, host Eric. I was talking to famous people. So I went to Denny's with Abraham last night, and he basically gave me, he did one of those things where he goes basically like, uh, uh, you know, like I got to talk to you about something. Um, I don't know how to bring it up. It's kind of going to make you feel uncomfortable or awkward or something. And I was like, what? What are you talking What's going on? And he's all, well, you know, I was in the room the other day. When you weren't there, and I'm like, uh huh, and well, you know, I got I got some feedback for you, <laughs> <laughs> uh, performance reviews, uh, and I'm like, okay, well, what's what is what's the what are you talking about? What are they what are they complaining about? And he said, oh well, they say you know basically like you're not nice enough, Eric, and I said, like, really? That seems odd and then he's like well more like you know maybe and and you know he wants to dance so i start throwing shit i never out got that vibe yeah that's, i never got that vibe so I start that's, throwing that's that's why i'm here not to be the nice one but because i can be so condescending sometimes it makes you seem like a saint that's why I'm here. <laughs> well, well he didn't mean that though see he, to him it's almost like a critique is a critique, is a critique. It doesn't really matter what the specifics are. The gist of it is, people aren't quite feeling like he thinks they ought to feel, you know? So, it's it, when I finally got it out of him, the gist of it was actually, not that I wasn't being nice, but rather that I wasn't giving enough, other people enough space to talk and or was, you know, like I did in this case. I come back in the room and you guys are talking about something, I don't know what, and I just say, like, just immediately just, here I am, and now we're going to do this, and, you know, so I, I guess I, I would, I like, annoying. I came in here because I like listening. I, I don't, I'm not really, I don't know, I'm not very articulate. I tried to convince her to stay. Yeah, I was going to leave. without her, I wouldn't have been able to <laughs> think of anything to talk about. So, okay. you came to the rescue area. Well, anyway, I'm not looking for you guys to jump to my defense here. It's not what I, I'm, I'm not. coming to your defense. Okay, okay, fine. The point is, you, fuck you, okay? it, it, thank you, thank you, Ken, I appreciate that. I can deal with that a lot more easily. Uh. But my point is, Abraham does this ENFJ thing that is very annoying. It's called... How long ago did he say this? This was, like, yesterday. Huh. We and, hey, have you guys... Wait, I want to ask something that's got nothing to do with this. Um, did you guys get the audio thing, like, fixed? Where, you know how the videos you're posting on YouTube? You can't hear anybody else, remember? That was, that was Abraham posting old it, videos that had bad quality. Really? But, it, it, okay. It, it, the problem I, yeah. is this: I periodically fuck up the audio. Okay, and when I fucked it up on a number of videos, I I often will upload a bunch of them, but I won't publish those ones because the audio is fucked up. And okay. Abraham's job is to publish. One of the things I have him doing right now is to publish videos that I uploaded. If I haven't done anything with it, he's supposed to title it and tag it and push publish and stuff. So I don't have to do that okay. because it's boring. Well, um, but I didn't, t I didn't, it's not his fault, right? I didn't, I didn't tell him, don't publish the ones with the fucked up audio. It would seem, <laughs> okay. it would seem kind of obvious maybe to some people, Yeah. but I, yeah. I cannot blame him for that. That is my bad. And I accept full responsibility for that. That's, yeah. I didn't tell him that. Yeah. So. Well, I figured that was just like a technical difficulty thing. I mean, I didn't know if it was your computer or what, but I, I figured it'd get straightened out. Yeah. I, I knew it was an old difficulty. video. <laughs> I knew it was an old video because of the topic, or one of them was, but I just saw on my feed, like, I think it was last night or something, I just see, Host Ken Seeks Wife, I think it was question mark or something like I that. I saw that, yeah. And I click on it, and I just comment, I'm like, did you just fucking clickbait me with my own name? Oh, man. Okay, go back to what you were saying before, I'm curious about what you said he, you know, what this Abraham guy was saying about, about oh, you. Oh, well, or, I mean, the gist of it was... His, but see, I understand what he means. He he thinks that he's read something correctly with his F.E., okay? Okay. And so he'll tell me the interpretation that he has, but when I try to figure out why he has that interpretation, he just gives me various reasons, of course. And the reason he gives me various reasons is because he doesn't have any reasons except his F.E. tells him He's got a vibe 
from people. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, yeah. Well, but what did they say, Abraham? Well, it's not so much yeah. what they said, it's how they said it. Abraham, <laughs> no, dude. That's not a reason for me to do anything. Your instincts on that are fine if it's a F.E. purely thing. This is not a pure F.E. thing. Because I was trying to explain them. There, there's actually two sets of interests to be upheld in a video like this. There's the interest of the people in the room, and there's the interest of the viewing audience. And so yeah. the balancing of that can be a challenge because you know what might be most fair in terms of balancing of opportunity to speak or whatever in a given room uh, might not make the best media. And one thing that I very much want to find the right sweet spot on is this phenomenon where I want to make sure the media is moving forward. Sometimes that means I'll keep talking because I don't really think that the, the space is being filled with anything. But I need to yeah. leave a little bit more time for that to happen because, it you know, I think, well, I've, I've given two seconds of not talking. If someone was going to say something, they would have jumped in by now. Not introverts. Yeah. They take their time to ease into things sometimes. So <laughs> that's my take on that. <laughs> thing is, though, I think you can't really service, at least I'm looking at this from my perspective, you can't really service, you know, if you were gearing things towards me, I need a lot more space if I'm really getting into the mode of thinking where I'm dwelling on taking my time to say something. I would take a lot more space than you'd be comfortable with. I mean, yeah. you, you've seen some of the stuff I've done. Um, go ahead. Go ahead. I would just... Go ahead. Oh, okay. Is that a torch? <laughs> oh. So frustrating. I just wanted to pull through. That's why I got map gas. Like, it's gotta pull now. I'm gonna fucking map gas that shit. <laughs> It's good weed. It's, it's hard to pull through. <laughs> it's like... But the thing is... <laughs> it's tough. It's like... It's like I wish uh, I could smoke, but I can't. I get drug tested, so... Mm. Do they consider Random pot a drug? Well, at the methadone clinic, they do. You should explain to them they're wrong about that. I'm sorry, host Ken. Please continue. We'll talk more about how they're mm -hmm. wrong about pot at the methadone clinic after host Ken continues so the, on the his story. Thing is, you, can, you can do something like that. You can say, okay, sorry, please continue. And that, that's not putting you out too much. Yeah. But at the same time, if I were to like really sit and just think about things, you know, it takes a considerable more time. You can't, I don't think you can fairly service that. Um, so maybe that's something that I could do on my own time or whatever. But when I think of host Eric, you know, the archetype of Eric, um, yeah. When I come to the room, I'm thinking, okay, this is an opportunity for me to speak up, um, speak more fluently. It, it, it's like, it, it, to me, you, you, you already, like, I, I understand if Abraham's saying you need to, or that you should think about the people in the room more. There's not a problem with that. Mm -hmm. But the idea that you need to essentially try to meet the needs of everybody in the room and the audience. Uh, I don't think it's something that you can meet fully. I don't think Which he was factoring in the audience. It. He wasn't factoring in the audience. He didn't think about it in that terms. He just thought, well, it's the people in the room. He that's... had a spidey sense and he ran with it. <laughs> yeah, that's what I think. Um, thank you Should for that. Should hosts? I appreciate your explaining this. Yeah. Well, I mean, the thing is, mm -hmm. That will happen, but I also, you know, I'm trying to I have to make sure that everybody understands the metaphysical framework of it. Because if they don't get the fact that you can be a host, if you just say, I'm next in line to be host. And then when the current host is done with that particular episode. See, that also encourages people to be more episodic, if that were to actually happen. Uh -huh. So yeah, until then, they can put up with Eric being Eric. Okay. Sounds good. I wasn't actually looking to counter Abe's point so much as say, this is how ENFJs operate, and it's a little frustrating because they mm -hmm. give you conclusions without reasons. And the reason is always the same, which is, I can tell. 
my epi get says so, but they've been trained by life to realize that that's not a good enough reason to convince other people. So they come up with this long series of reasons, some of which contradict each other. <laughs> they, just, they just throw out reasons until you accept one of them. Oh, oh, that sounds like a good reason. That's the reason I meant. It doesn't let you off the hook either. You can't just, can't be full-blown NT error. Gotta exercise that, that FE muscle every now and again. Well, Abe's good for me in that regard. Abe makes me more attentive to FE stuff in general. Abe points shit out when I'm out in the world. Like, see that thing over there? That dude's mad at that chick or whatever. And he, he gives me a little synopsis of what's going on, even though we can't hear them. I, that, that I always, noticed that, I like stuff. that. Yeah. I, that impresses me when he does that. Yeah. I don't know if I'm the best on that. I'm, I'm kind of I'm, I'm kind of agreeing with what you, uh, you said like a few days ago earlier in the week. Uh, where you mentioned that you thought in terms of Enneagram that I was probably a six. Because it's like, but before I'm thinking this is what somebody's thinking or this is the answer to something, I'm thinking, yeah, I have a hunch on that. But I'm wrong. Or at least I think I'm wrong most of the time. So I might be like, somebody may be thinking that, but eh. I, I, mean, I think I'll, That's I'm, good, though. I'll maybe a more complete picture would say, I have a hunch on that. There's a good chance I'm right, but it's not worth the risk of taking the chance that I might be wrong. Yeah. You know, it's like erring on the side of caution. As an INFJ, you're bound to sort of have a good, clear instinct of intuitive intuition about your read on it. But as somebody who has TI in the third slot, you also, I think you prioritize TI a little more heavily maybe than a lot of INFJs, even though you've got strong FE and you're social and all that stuff. It seems to me TI, SI uh, are kind of a, eh, let's hold back and make sure kind of a thing. I, I notice when I overstep, um, it's because I'm blatantly just trying to push the sort of worry wart nature aside, and I'm just trying to go with the flow of something. Uh, but it's weird because I still be a, at least somewhat aware, like, oh, I shouldn't have said this that way or this way. But I'm like, fuck it, I'm just, you know, I'm just trying to go with it. I don't want to you know, be constantly self-critical about something. But then when I'm not in that mode and I'm more reserved than I find even compared to some INFJs that I've seen, and maybe this is just my own perception, um, that compared to some people, I feel like there's certain situations where I'm more reserved than maybe somebody else would be where I'm like, yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> um, okay, what... Am I recording right now? What are we talking? Are we making a topic right now? We're know. always recording. I was recording. Here and the always Okay, I don't know what that topic was about, but I want to talk next about a different topic. Or at least introduce the possibility of talking about it.